Hello everyone, back to into today's first video. We're going to do the uh, ECMWF 30 day ensemble forecast for the UK and for Europe for today's uh, first video. So um, we're at the Hungarian Met Office uh, for this and we're going to have a look at the temperature and precipitation anomalies on a week by week basis uh, for the next um, 30 days. This takes us well into uh, November, of course. Coming up this afternoon, we'll have all of the latest on the Arctic blast that is on the way. I'm sure you've heard about the northerly winds that are heading our way at the end of the week and into the weekend. It's going to be a cold weekend. There could be a little bit of snow around as well. I'll have more about that in today's second video on the homepage uh, this afternoon. But starting us off is our 30-day look ahead with the ECMWF. So as I say, we're at the Hungarian Met Office for this. You can find the link to the Hungarian Met Office on the uh, links page. We can't show you mean sea level pressure or 500 millibar high dollars unfortunately, uh, with this. But you get a rough idea of what the model is suggesting in terms of its pattern from the temperature and precipitation uh, anomalies. So without further ado, let's get on with it. We're going to start off in week one. This is going to be taking us, it's week 43 for the year, but it's kind of like week one for our 30-day uh, forecast. And uh, we're starting off on the 22nd through to the 28th of October. So the coming week looks cold, actually, for much of... Uh, Northern and Western Europe got uh, below average temperature anomalies here up over Scandinavia. Winter will be biting in. I think there'll be quite a bit of snow actually coming up in the next few days across Scandinavia. Also colder than average across much of the UK, across Ireland, down to France, in towards Spain and Portugal. A bit cooler than average down there. Uh, cooler than average through um, the low countries as well, Belgium and Holland. Temperature anomalies there are coming out cooler than average. Germany and Poland, um, so it is a little bit cooler than average, even there, actually. Uh, as we go further south and the east, that's where the warmth is. So across the southern and southeastern parts of Europe, from Italy over the Adriatic, in towards the Balkans, and then over towards the Black Sea, we find those areas coming out warmer than average. And then it gets a bit cooler again as we go down towards Greece and to Turkey. Central basin of the Mediterranean, including the holiday islands of Ibiza, Mallorca, Minorca, Corsica, Sardinia, all of those areas and Malta looking rather cooler than average, if anything. And then in terms of the uh, precipitation anomaly, real mixed bag actually, varying from area to area. The UK and Ireland coming out with really quite a dry week, so cold and dry for the UK and for Ireland, away from northern Scotland anyway, where it's a bit wetter than average, and that is primarily down to uh, wintry showers. Scandinavia, so um, northern parts of Sweden, a bit dry than average there, uh, but uh, as we look towards sort of uh, Norway, it's wetter than average there, and a lot of that could be in terms of uh, snowfalls, of course. Then we're going down into the uh, central east part of Europe, generally wetter than average through most of these central eastern areas. Through the Mediterranean, again, it varies from area to area. Spain and Portugal look drier than average. The holiday islands in the Mediterranean looking a bit wetter than average. Italy looking very wet. Um, and then the southeast of Europe and down towards Greece, those areas look quite dry. So varying from area to area, but I think broadly dry is probably in the far west and northwest and wet is through those central and eastern parts of Europe. That's how week two is looking. It's the 29th of October to the 4th of October. Still cold across many sort of uh, western parts of uh, Europe and up in the north. So Scandinavia, again, is colder than average. Uh, we're colder than average over the UK and Ireland as well. France is coming out colder than average. Uh, much colder than average down across Spain and Portugal with temperature anomalies of around 3 to 6 degrees below average. So quite clearly in the west, and the northwest of Europe, it's uh, quite a cold week coming up. Over in the east, though, it looks pretty warm, actually. So um, as we get towards Poland eastwards, most parts of eastern Europe are coming out much warmer than average, three to six degree uh, temperature, uh, above average temperature anomalies there. So I think broadly, we're going to ha be having southerly winds pushing up this eastern side of Europe as we go into the start of November, and still northerly winds uh, coming down the western side of Europe. It won't be quite as straightforward as that, but that's the broad uh, idea. Proper east-west split uh, across Europe in the sort of um, first few days of November. 
precipitation anomalies look like that. So over in the east of Europe, it is a bit drier than average there. It looks like you've got some sort of ridging uh, there. Up over Scandinavia, Sweden looks wet and average. Norway uh, looks dry and average down to Denmark. Uh, coming out close to average with uh, precipitation through there. So uh, then we go down to the UK and for Ireland, it looks a bit dry and average for Scotland. But for England and Wales, close to average. Down to uh, Spain, Portugal and France, it's wetter than average and looking very wet through this central basin of the Mediterranean once again. Heavy showers, if not thunderstorms and longer spells of rain kicking off. And uh, no doubt as you go towards the Alps, uh, Southern Alps and over towards the Italian Alps, I suspect there will be a lot of snow coming through there as well. Week 3 is the 5th to the 11th of November, gradually warming up across central parts of Europe. So over in the east of Europe, it is still warmer than average there. You'll notice these central areas are warming up, so kind of like uh, uh, Germany, Poland, down towards eastern parts of France, beginning to lift the temperature up a little bit there. And even in the west of Europe, we find that uh, we're losing the most cold and average temperature on this generally. Close to average for the UK. Still a little bit cooler than average for Ireland. Uh, Spain and Portugal a bit cooler than average as well. France, real east-west split, western parts of France. Uh, coming out uh, close to average, but over across eastern parts of France, it's actually a little bit, uh, a little bit warmer than average. So generally, the warmth looks like it's beginning to extend back in uh, from southern and eastern parts of Europe. Temperature anomalies are weakening, as they often do, as we go this far out. So uh, precipitation anomalies, I should say, weakening, uh, as they often do uh, when we go this far out. We find most parts of Europe are being forecast to have close to average precipitation in this week. There's still a weak signal for these eastern parts of Europe to be uh, drier than average. And through this central part of the Mediterranean, over towards Italy, again, still looks a little bit wetter than average there. Otherwise, no real signal I don't think, for uh, this week free period in terms of precipitation. And then finally, we go through to week four, which takes us from the 12th through to the 18th of November. And uh, again, we find that uh, many of these central and eastern parts of Europe are coming out uh, warmer than average once again. Out in the west of Europe, including the UK, Ireland, France, Spain, Portugal. I mean, it's cooler there, but it's not as cool as it is as we start off with lots of the cold and average temperature anomalies. And we've reverted back towards average. That might be that things are indeed warming up across western and northwestern Europe as we go into the middle of November. Or it could just be that the mod is kind of losing its signal a little bit as we're going this far out. That's definitely something that happens with precipitation. I think it does happen to some degree with temperature as well. Broadly, though, we can say that there is a bit, still a bit of an east-west split going on. So, obviously, it is uh, warmer in the east and it's cooler in the west. It's just not as cool in the west of Europe as it is kind of like in weeks one and two. Finally, going down to the precipitation anomalies in, the, uh, in week four, the 12th to the 18th of November. Again, very weak signals. I think we do see some indications that these northern parts of Europe are a bit drier than average, so possibly we've got high pressure uh, sitting up here somewhere around Denmark or the Baltic Sea, perhaps. Uh, still looks a little bit wetter than average through this central basin of the Mediterranean. This is right, it's going to be a very wet month um, coming up for the Mediterranean, actually. A lot of useful rainfall down in the Med, but no doubt there will be problems with flooding. Uh, elsewhere, just not a huge amount of... Uh, to go on in terms of the signals, we're reverting in many areas close to average or possibly we're just losing uh, the signal to some degree. So I think we can say that uh, we're in for a pretty cold couple of weeks across many northern and western parts of uh, Europe. Temperature anomalies are coming out uh, around sort of uh, one to six degrees below average in many of those western areas through the end of October to start of November. It always looks warmer in the east, so eastern parts of Europe and possibly central parts of Europe at times as well. Getting the southerly winds as those northerly winds are pushing down into west of Europe. Precipitation-wise, it looks quite dry where it's coldest and it looks um, very unsettled down in the central base of the Mediterranean in particular. If you've got a holiday coming up in any of those holiday islands, I'd take a brolly with you. It does look as though you're going to be uh, impacted by some rain uh, and some thunderstorms 
at times. And as we get to further on into November, it looks like we do lose the cold and average signal for the west of Europe. But it is still generally coolest in the west and warmest in the east of Europe. And that might just be down to the fact that the modern is losing its signal, particularly for those cold and average temperatures out in the west as we get through to November. I've got a feeling we could be in for a pretty cold November actually across many northern and western parts of Europe. So we should wait and see, certainly the first half anyway, we should wait and see how it all plays out. We'll do it all over again uh, next week, but that's your uh, UK and European outlook for uh, this week. And uh, come back this afternoon when we have a detailed look at that cold, northerly Arctic blast that's on the way for the weekend. But that's all for now, and thanks for watching.